Hey guys, I am getting ready to head out, but I want to jump on here and say hi. Thanks for stopping by Made My Monica. I don't know what's happening with my hair today, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so we are making this clothes pin uh, basket or tear tray. And it looks like a basket, but you just use clothes pins from Dollar Tree. So uh, pick up well, you're going to need three and a half packs, but go ahead and pick up four packs of clothespins from Dollar Tree and the uh, two-piece burner cover set uh, that they have. So uh, it's only one dollar, but you get both pieces. And I was going to use one candlestick, but ended up using two candlesticks. I know candlesticks are hard to find right now at Dollar Tree. So anything that you can use to uh, put the tear tray together. So anything to put in between, a glass, a vase, or anything like that. So just go ahead and do that. And then we are going to get into the video and I'm going to show you how to make this adorable tear tray with clothespins and you can put your gnomes in it if you are lucky enough to find gnomes from Dollar Tree. So here it goes, guys. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on this cutie patootie tear tray made out of clothespins. How cute is that? All right, you guys, so like I said in the intro, you're gonna to wanna to grab these clothespins from Dollar Tree. Now you're gonna need three and a half packs, but go ahead and grab four because some of them end up either broke or kind of wonky. So go ahead and pick up the four packs and then that uh, two uh, burner cover set. So you get both pieces in the one set. So that's all you need. Oh, and you're gonna need the uh, Waverly Wax, the antique wax, and we are gonna put it in a baggie with some water. So we're going to stain our clothespins. Now you don't have to do this, but you can see the color difference right there of the stained ones versus the unstained. So depending on what color that you want your tear tray, you can totally leave these, you know, the natural wood color if you want to. I just chose to stain mine. Now I ended up doing two tear trays, so that's why I have a lot of clothespins. So anyway, you just put it in that baggie with the antique wax and just some hot water or just water, and you're just gonna shake it up like that. And then when you take them out, they will be stained and you don't have to sit there and color or paint each one of those clothespins, right? Holla, genius. So anyway, you'll get all of those clothespins uh, stained really pretty quickly. So there's all my clothespins stained. They all kind of ended up different colors depending on how long I left them in there. So just use your antique wax, a baggie with some water in it and throw your clothespins in. So if you want them darker, leave them longer. If you want them a little bit lighter, just go ahead and shake the bag and take them out. So, and then I just piled them up. You just let them dry. And, um, and now we're gonna take these burner covers and get those painted. Now I painted mine in truffle because I wanted mine to match the clothespins as closely as possible. So you are more than welcome to, you know, paint yours white or, you know, whatever you wanna do with that. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and paint one of those really hard to find candlesticks. I just happen to have two of them in my stash and you'll see the next one that I use, I had already painted white and used on another project and then I went and hijacked it so I could use it on this project. So I just wanted a little more space between my tiers. And so that's why I did it that way. So I am just drying these so that I can move forward with our project here. And I'm gonna use the E6000. I'm just gonna attach that bottom candlestick to the bottom burner cover. And you're gonna wanna use the big one on the bottom. So now we're just going to use the clothespins and you are literally just going to attach them to the burner cover. Now go ahead and have this on a flat surface so that you can get the clothespins on there. Just go ahead and get them on any way you can get them on and then you can fiddle with them, you know, in, in a little bit. Uh, I'll show you that I kind of fiddled with mine and straightened them all up. So no big deal. You just go ahead and get them on there and uh, you're just gonna put them all the way around and you'll be amazed at how this looks once you get them all on. So adorable. And you'll see why we painted this burner cover too because you can see a little bit in between the clothespins and stuff. But, and then all you do is straighten those and uh, it comes out pretty good. Now I'm gonna show you at the very end once you get all the way around Sometimes you don't have enough space in there to fit one more clothespin in. So then you'll just go ahead and readjust uh, your clothespins 
until they kind of all fit in there. So once you get them all on, you know, then you can play with them and, and make sure that they're all straight and, and make sure that you like it. So here's the last one that I put in. And as you can see, there's not enough room for that next one. But all I did was just go ahead and add a little bit of space to each one. And I just worked my way around until I thought it looked nice. So you do it, whatever makes your heart happy and uh, until you get the look that you like. So, and uh, now that that bottom one is all done, we're gonna go ahead and start the top one. So this is the smaller burner cover and we're gonna do just the exact same process. So you're just gonna take those same clothespins and you are gonna put them around. And then you'll see on this one, I did end up with the exact space to fit one more clothespin. So, I didn't have to readjust those one those ones uh, that one came out just fine so now we have our bottom one done and we have our top one done so now we're going to try and cover up the middle of that where the clothespin um, metal piece is so i've got this rope from dollar tree and then i just unwound it there's three pieces in there and i just wanted a single piece but feel free to use the whole thing so if you like it with three pieces on it go ahead and do that then I grabbed this burlap ribbon uh, to put between the two candlesticks. So because I decided to, to do two candlesticks, I needed something. So um, I'll show you here. You're just gonna use your hot glue gun. You're just gonna put it right along there. And then, like I said, I just used a single strand of this nautical rope. It's the white one from Dollar Tree. Um, if you like the other one, the uh, more jute colored one, go ahead and use that and then I just put it all the way around. And you can also, like I said, use all three together if you like a, you know, a, a, a thicker a trim there. So uh, I did the bottom one and now we're just doing the top one here. And you're just, again, just gonna go all the way around. And it just kind of gives it a finished look so you don't see that metal, you know, from the outside. Um, you're more than welcome to do your inside one, but it's not really gonna show once you get your stuff in there, so not a big deal. So now you can see I had already painted that other candlestick white, and then I just painted it in the same truffle color. It's that uh, Waverly chalk paint in truffle. And so then I'm just gonna use my E6000 and my hot glue to glue the two of those together. And then you'll see I use that burlap ribbon then that I got from Dollar Tree and just connected those together so that you didn't see those seams. And I think it kind of adds to it as well. So that's what that looks like. You know, feel free to use whatever you want in the center there. Or if you have a tall enough, um, you know, uh, base in between, then you won't need to do that, but up to you what you want to do. Then again, I just use my E6000 and my hot glue, and we are going to go ahead and attach that top tier as well. So you're going to put the top one onto that candlestick, and uh, it gets a little heavy with all those clothespins on there. So you just want to make sure that you get it in the right spot the first time, because once you set it down, you're gonna wanna just leave it down. And you'll get an instant uh, glue with that hot glue, and then that E6000 is gonna hold it permanently. So here I've styled it for you for a coffee bar. So you can put the coffee pods on the bottom and put some cups and lids in the top or some creamer. Here it is with the cutie patootie. Um, gnomes that I was lucky enough to find from Dollar Tree. So they do have those and uh, just keep looking. Hopefully they bring more out. So, and then I'll style it a different way for you and I'll show you how I put it on our church's uh, coffee bar. So that's where I use that friend. Um, you saw that in the video earlier. I used that friend down below. So that's a good way to use up those as well. I know they just came out with all those laser cut cutie patootie things. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video and please subscribe. Thanks guys.